agent share covers uh, as, as a way to 560 hours. Um, so that's about, say, three, three and a half days a week uh, for a semester. Um, the orientation is, is, is can be clinical or it can be orientated on, on research. You can do a, a clinical internship, and most of our students actually want to do a clinical internship. But uh, we have quite a few students too who are more interested in doing research, uh, getting a PhD, etc. So you can do a research internship too. Um, but let me focus mostly on the clinical internships because that's basically, let's face it, that's about 95% uh, of our students who want to become clinicians. Um, there is a, a big issue there because the native language, you, you need to speak the native language of both your clients and of the, the team that you're working uh, in and with. Um, that, that's quite essential. It makes it difficult for Dutch students to do an internship abroad, and it also makes it difficult for international students to do an internship here. Basically, the golden rule is that you need to do your internship where your native uh, language is spoken, and that usually is your home country. Keep that in the back of your mind, and, and uh, while you still uh, are where you are, it, it may be important to already orient yourself on what possibilities are if you are considering coming to to um, to see to check around what the possibilities would be to do an internship in your country. Um, it's usually uh, conducted externally, of course, especially clinical internships are done. Uh, Elsewhere, uh, research inter internships can be done internally. We have our research groups, of course, but even there, we see that some students do that with external organizations that we're in close contact with. What you always get in a clinical internship or a research internship is supervision on location by, if it's a clinical internship, by, by a registered or licensed uh, clinician, and you have uh, uh, a departmental supervisor who is more in the background and, and who's more in a reflective or personal growth role than, than the, the supervisor that you have on location. And um, for, for the Dutch students, it prepares for, for uh, the, the, the Dutch postgrad um, training trajectory for a healthcare psychologist. And for most foreign uh, students, it prepares you too for entering postgrad training in, in your home country too. It is important though to check that with your uh, National Institute for Psychologists, whether they actually do accept this master as, as a, a stepping stone towards a postgrad program, program because uh, some uh, do not, but most of them do, but some have difficulty with the fact that our study program is covering just one year. Well, we cover one year, that's that's true, but we work twice as hard. Or, well, we, you, students work twice as hard, so basically what they're doing is uh, two years in one year. But that is important to keep in mind, that if you're considering to, for instance, become a clinical psychologist in uh, the country that you live in, and you're Considering coming to Utrecht to do your master here, please check with a local national organization for psychologists to see if they accept this master as, as, as part of your training program. Well, we work together quite closely with a lot of organizations in the, in the Netherlands. I just I'm just giving some examples here. We won't, get, won't go into details of that, but. We have a, 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 a rich network, so a network of organizations that we work with. And even for uh, um, for students who, who have to go abroad to, to do their, their internship, we, we of course have, based on, on the current students and our alumni, we have quite a network with uh, 
mostly European though, but with organizations outside the Netherlands too for, for internship positions. What's important to keep in mind if you are already uh, thinking about trying to find yourself an internship position uh, is that there are certain criteria that the organization needs to meet. Um, and so, uh, uh, you need to work with, with a, a group of professionals working in, in, in mental health care. Well, that's, that's pretty obvious, of course. Uh, you, need, you need a well-trained local supervisor uh, with, with a lot of clinical experience in treatment and in diagnostics, because that's usually what you do in your clinical internship. After getting acquainted, etc., you start with diagnostic work and slowly, but you're, you're, you're uh, uh, first as a co-therapist and later, perhaps if if, if you're doing well, uh, as an as an independent uh, therapist, you you work with clients. Um, you need to 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 be able to 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 uh, meet with your local supervisor for at least once a week. Uh, it says an hour, but about forty five minutes will do too. But on a regular basis, you need to meet your local supervisor and your union supervisor to, to, to talk things through and to be able to ask questions and, and get answers to those questions. And uh, the, the academic supervisor you see every, uh, every so many weeks, usually once about five, six weeks, and, and uh, sometimes individually and sometimes in, in a group of students who are doing their internship too. Well, um, these are uh, internships within the international context that we have at clinical institutions in the Netherlands, in Suriname, Caribbean islands, and South Africa, for instance, at clinical institutions abroad, um, and research internships uh, are possible in, in clinical health care organizations, in hospitals, and at universities, sometimes even at other universities, or uh, well, it could be all, all kinds of organizations. One thing is important to keep in mind, and that that is true for all our students. We we, we try and, and, and facilitate, of course, you getting an internship, you acquiring an internship, but uh, as a student, you are responsible yourself to find your internship placement. And specifically for international students, it's good to keep in mind that, that uh, please try and bring your own internship when you're already coming to Utrecht. Make sure that you have contacts with organizations, uh, if possible already have come to some sort of an agreement with an organization that you can go to later on. So first you come to Utrecht to do the, the teaching here. Uh, and then later on, you, you go back to your country and then start your internship there. But it would be very wise to already have acquired such a position, uh, or at least have the contacts to 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 to, uh, uh, to figure out whether it's uh, whether it's possible to do an, an internship there uh, before you start in Utrecht. So we do facilitate things. And we try and be helpful, as helpful as we can, of course. Uh, that's certainly true, but the personal responsibility that you have there is very important. Um, well, I don't need to go through the details of this anymore. I do feel so. Uh, but but that basic message, and, and of course, it, it's, uh, that, that is true for our Dutch students too. They are responsible for their own internships.